Hey everybody, this is Mike. Today is November 5th, 2020. So let's just jump right into this. Um, three days ago was the election day, November 3rd. Oh God, I guess that's two days ago is the election day. And the big story we can see is that candidate Joe Biden on, on election day, he returns to his boyhood home in Scranton, Pennsylvania. And he um, scrawled a message on the living room wall, from this house to the White House with the grace of God. And this is interesting because the previous video I did went deep into Scranton and what Scranton is. And this past weekend, I was a guest on a podcast, The Forbidden forbidden knowledge news and I also covered all of the Scranton stuff and so now we see right here what what Joe Biden did is known as anchoring and so here we go this is the actual message he is anchoring a his desire you know onto this house and this house is in Scranton so it's not the house which he's anchoring it onto I suggest I suggest he's anchoring it onto Scranton um, anchoring, uh, has a couple connotations. If you're familiar with it as a term, you're probably familiar with it as it relates to hypnosis and, um, neuro-linguistic programming, which is, you know, basically hypnosis. And, you know, if you've ever seen, um, I don't know, like the Manchurian candidate where like the guy gets a telephone call and he picks it up and he hears a couple of tones and then he switches into another state of consciousness that's anchoring that that state of consciousness which that Manchurian candidate changed into is anchored to that tone there was there was a process which that person went through that when they heard that tone they became this other thing so that is the basics of of anchoring as it relates to um as it relates to uh um you know, hypnosis. Uh, if there's any question here, take a look at this. Um, a question if these guys are practicing um, hypnosis. This is an article from a long time ago, like, you know, 2015. Uh, you could still find this on the internet. And so it says, an examination of Obama's use of hidden hypnosis techniques in his speeches. The evidence is here. This document contains over 60 pages of evidence and analysis proving Barack Obama's use of a little known but and highly deceptive and manipulative form of hack hypnosis on millions of unaware Americans and reveals what only a few psychologists and hypnosis NLP experts know. And this, the author of that article, which you can still find on the internet, um, just goes in and demonstrates he's an expert in neurolinguistic programming and just breaks down all of Obama's um, uh, speeches. And he's like, these are basic NLP programming techniques. And you can see all these different articles all about like N NLP and, um, and, uh, and Obama. And so now we see Biden here, who is Ob um, Obama's vice president. And so he's doing an anchoring though. I'm going to suggest this is not the anchoring, which Obama was doing to, to wow and, and, and spellbound a crowd of people as much as this is, um, you know, uh, more like what you would call magic. Keep in mind, if you know anyone here is a, is is a student of of NLP, they'll know one of the um, quintessential NLP books is called "The Structure of Magic." It was written by one of the uh, one of the the, the fathers of neuro linguistic programming, and it's it's all about you know you know syntax and language but they're basically saying like this is magic and and they're not being metaphorical you know this is magic and so what we're seeing right here is an anchoring but we're seeing um we're seeing obama or excuse me um biden anchor his 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 white house app um goals to to Scranton and what Scranton represents. In the last couple of videos, uh, our last video, like I really went into Scranton and I wanted to kind of cover two different things. I wanted to first demonstrate that Scranton is constantly being anchored into the collective consciousness through popular culture, but then also begin to open up the idea uh, or the question, which is, um, 
why would you anchor there? Like, why is this important? And, and I identified that Scranton is tied to a physical an anomaly, the um, anthracite um, deposit, which lies underneath it. Um, and in order, I, I talk about consciousness. I talk about third dimensional, fourth dimensional, fifth dimensional consciousness. Part of moving out of fourth dimensional consciousness is recognizing like how you interpret reality has been shaped. If you're looking at anthracite as being a coal, a fossil fuel, and that's its purpose, well, you know, you're seeing it through this one lens. And so to move to a greater consciousness, which is necessary now, you know, it's always important to move to a greater consciousness, but because of what is happening in the world right now, like this is the way of not getting pulled into the world into this 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 closed loop that's what the whole game is about is that it's you're sucked in one level of consciousness and because of that you don't realize there are other ways of seeing and experiencing reality that you just go along with it that's like you know the game but because the move is happening right now we have an opportunity to to move from outside of that one level of consciousness and in order to do that to move outside of it you need to start with just like that you know that beginner's mind. You don't know. What does it mean? All we can do is begin to start looking at the clues that are around us. If you're familiar with, with my work on the Susquehanna mystery, and I, I highly recommend like becoming familiar with it because that is the ultimate anchoring of this modern world. Um, computer technology, globalism, and electricity, um, three-wire distribution of electricity have all been anchored onto the Susquehanna River, the oldest river on the planet, which begs the question is why would they anchor it onto this river? Why is that so significant? Well, in order to really understand that, you have to be able to move out of your understanding of what a river is. For as long as you think you understand you know what a river is, well, then you will not be able to understand the significance of the anchoring which was done. So I talked a little bit about anchoring, and now I'm going to go in and, and talk about another type of similar, it's different, but it's similar type of magic techniques, and this is known as sympathy. Um, anchoring is like, you know, um, you know, sponsoring, a, you know, like in golf tournaments, you'll see like, uh, or tennis tournaments, you'll see like companies will sponsor a, a tournament and they're anchoring their brand to what that tournament represents. And, and, and sports, uh, you know, sports, sports are really significant, you know, we, we know in terms of control and culture. So, uh, branding on, on, um, branding on, or is, is by, as, by bringing your your particular brand in alignment with a particular sporting event is anchoring but the real the real power is like what is what is the sport what does that represent and that is more so the sympathy when you are when you are um in sympathy in 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 empathy with something of great significance then you begin to flow with it and you're tapping into it um anchoring um could also be thought of uh like the priest clasps um the priest class were introduced as a go between the masses of people and and divinity for lack of a better word and they were taught that oh if you want to go and connect with god you got to go through the priest class and the priest class were more or less anchored onto god i'm their way through god and they can control it and and they control the the masses um connection with with whatever they're being anchored to now if you want to go and and go around you know and not be caught in that anchoring trap you want to practice sympathy and sympathy is becoming connected with the 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 thing itself and in this case um what i'm going to suggest it really is 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 um the susquehanna river and i've, I've talked about this um you know for for five or six years and i and um you know, I want to go show you some of the ways which I practice sympathy with understanding and connecting with the river. Not to say that this is how you do it, uh, as much as to give you um, clues as to, like, this is how you can do it. Um, right here. You know, I made this years ago. This is a... Um, this is a, a stone from the river, from the actual Susquehanna River. And I replicated through my own creative 
you know, my own creative desire, a mirror image of the river. And, you know, I've got these, these, uh, um, what is this? Blue kyanite. You know, this is from Pennsylvania as well, uh, attached to it. But this here becomes the symbol, a way of connecting with the river. This is a, this is in sympathy with the river. I understand why. Um, you know, drawing maps. I make these maps. If you ever order anything from me, I always include these cards uh, along with it. They they tell you about the map. But when you put it, when you recreate this 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 river in your consciousness and your nervous system, you know it gets inside you. You begin to create sympathy. Here's another one. You know, another one of these postcards. This is of a very specific location, the 40th parallel, um, and the Susquehanna River. Inside, um, inside the rights of the 40th parallel, you know, I, I created all of these different maps which are sympathetic resonance areas with different key locations of, um, of the river. And so the reason why, why we do this, and, and, and this is not a, there, there's a rational mind element, this is why we're doing it, but then we get to this place where we jump off where we we move beyond the rational mind and we enter into something which is greater and that um that is technically a you know it's a dangerous space because the rational mind what it does do is it provides a degree of protection of mental protection but once you can get to a place where you are safe to let your guard down that's when you want to let your guard down you know these are just the techniques of how you do things um I want to go and show you. This is this is what I'm working on right now. I've never worked with fabric before, but I'm making I'm making a a map replica of um, of the Susquehanna River. So this is you know a work in progress. I'm going to show it to you. You know what you can see right now. Let me see. I'm going to create this um, in the same way I've done with the starboard and I place the the um, you know the the placement of the the heavenly bodies at the time of someone's birth on the starboard I recreate that um, as above so below um, in starboard ceremonies I'm going to do something very similar with with this map and I'm going to cast stones <laughs> I'm going to cast stones on it so I'll keep you guys posted on where that's going um, but I just wanted to go and share that. I want to go and share and show you, like, you know, this is, this is what these folks are doing. They're, um, they're, 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 they're using anchoring. They're using, um, all of these different techniques in, in subversive ways, uh, by listening to these videos, by becoming aware, by having your own experiences, by doing your own research, you're becoming connected, uh, not through their anchoring. You know, if you're going, th if you're unaware and you're working with computers and all this other globalism, like, you know, which we all are, you know, you're connected to the Susquehanna River one way or the other. If you're familiar with Scranton through all of these, like, you know, the office and all this other stuff, you're connected to it unconsciously. But as we become aware, we're able to move past that. So, um, Hopefully this is this is both inspiring for you to go and begin to to start your own practices, begin to look at how you relate to the outer world in new ways, um, careful ways, thoughtful ways, but also um, conscious ways. And uh, um, you know, I like to kind of show the stuff I'm working on. <laughs> I got an audience here. I'm going to show you. Um, I want to go one more thing. Um, so it was brought up in uh, a comment in that last video. It was kind of a joke, you know, saying because it's talking all about Michael Scott and who all these different Michael Scotts were. And someone's like, hey, maybe you're Michael Scott. And, you know, they're being funny. Um, but the truth of the matter is, and you know, you, you kind of want to know, like, who, who are people? Um, you know, you're, you're listening to some ideas I have. Um, and so you should probably be a little bit more aware of, like, um, you know, you should do this with anyone. I'm like, you know, <laughs> who is this person? Um, so I want to go and tell you a little bit about my lineage. Um, uh, so John Fa, Johnny Fa, he was um, he was the leader of the Egyptians or Gypsies in Scotland. Um, and he's this known as the King of the Gypsies. 1540 uh, um, was his time period. And um, he actually had a really nice relationship, a rapport with King James V. Um, 
and then his son and successor, and it's never explained why, um, his name is Johnny Wan. And um, he was the son of Johnny Fong, and he became the king of the gypsies. And here we can see some more um, about it. It is, it is curious that the son and heir of John Fall, or Fall, should be known as John Wan. And even more inexplicable is the fact that whereas John Fall was alive in, in 1540, and according to the above precept, had been succeeded by his father, his son, John Juan, in the following May, yet a document to be cited in the year um, 1553, refers to the same John Fall as though he were still alive. Um, so, this is my lineage, my friends. <laughs> uh, I come from the King of the Gypsies. Um, take that any way you like. Uh, until next time, have a good day.